Hello and welcome back. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, depends where you are. Uh, some of you are uh, very, very early in the day. Uh, thank you for attending the webinar. Okay, so today is the, the final, the, the fourth one uh, in this Get Started series. Um, and today is about connecting your sensors. Okay, let's uh, dive in. So agenda, so first recap. Uh, uh, we will review a little bit about the data model and URL patterns. And then today we'll talk about create, update, and delete entities. Um, so connecting your sensors basically has two parts. The first part is create your sensor in the Sensor Things API. So your sensor become a virtual thing in this virtual world uh, on the web. So that's the first part. So create and register your sensors or the things uh, on the web uh, with Sensor Things API. And after you create that, and then you can upload your readings or observations, to be more correctly. Um, and then that basically is the create, update, delete uh, uh, URL patterns. And then we'll talk about a little bit advanced topic, a deep insert. It's a very, very useful uh, way uh, for developers. Uh, you, could find, you, you will find it's a very, very powerful way for you uh, to manipulate entities. And, actually, and also has a great uh, benefit, uh, for example, save uh, the the number of uh, HTTP connections required, and you can uh, also save the code space. It's a very powerful API. And finally, we, we'll, we will see the uh, look at Arduino code and how to how easily actually it's just one line of code um, about connecting to Sensor Things API and many examples. So today we'll do a lot a lot of live demos uh, to show that, and it's always exciting to do live live demos. But uh, we'll see what's going to happen. Okay, it's about me, and uh, you know me. Um, I'm the editor of Sensor Things, and then I'm active in the open standard world, uh, in, especially in OGC, Open Geospatial Consortium. I also recently am more active in ITUT and the ISO. And about Sensor Up, uh, we consider ourselves as a world leader in OGC sensor web and internet things, and we're leading several international standards. And we developed world's first OGC Sensor Things API implementation, uh, although there are more than one, not just us, there are more. Uh, we are proud Eclipse Foundation member and OGC member. So some of the updates, actually, uh, because actually this is not the final webinar of Sensor Up. This is uh, the final one in this series. And so um, in January 27th, uh, we are invited uh, to give a uh, virtual IoT meetup uh, for Eclipse, Eclipse Foundation. The topic is uh, building an IoT cloud platform with uh, OGC standards. And uh, it will be January 27th, 2016. So it's not posted yet. Uh, however, I encourage you to go to uh, the, the link below, and you will find information when it's up. So that's uh, Eclipse uh, webinar. And we will be in DC area from January 11th to 13th. Uh, we, uh, we are participating in uh, OGC IoT pilot and there will be a demo event uh, at the Department of Homeland Security. So uh, Koro and I will be around. And please you know, give us a shout uh, if uh, you are interested in uh, meeting us, and beers on us. So we'll be there. And we will be back to DC area in March again. A uh, lot of things are happening uh, over there. So uh, again, we would love to meet. Uh, that week, uh, the second week of March, uh, that's the OGC Technical Committee meeting, as well as the Eclipse Foundation Conference. And we will be giving an uh, EclipseCon uh, presentation, as well as we'll be very active, uh, a lot of meetings at the OGC meeting. So if you want to meet, shout, uh, and then beers on us. OK, so let's dive into Central Things API. And uh, just, just a background, if, if it's your first time attending this uh, webinar, this is not about a vertical solution. and it's, It is not about a certain implementation. This is about the standard API. So this is uh, some of the materials actually is a little bit uh, geared toward to uh, developers. OK, so this is a recap of the data model. So on the, your uh, button left, you have the thin. And then a thing has a location, a historical location. So when thing moves, that it has these historical locations, right? Move from building one to building two. So uh, building one becomes the historical location uh, after the thing moved to building two, for example. And then the thing ha can have a zero to many data streams. Um, let's say your cell phone is a thin, and your cell phone have uh, multiple data streams. You have temperature, you have uh, the battery status, you have uh, even a camera and video cam. So that's the data streams. Uh, 
And each data stream is collected uh, using a sensor, so the temperature sensor using a certain sensor model. And so that's the important metadata. And the data stream observes certain observed property. For example, um, if you have a thermostat, and you observe the air temperature of your house. So air temperature is your observed property. This is very important to give meaning to your data uh, so that uh, you can use your data in the future and uh, more correctly and uh, to do analytics. Uh, meaning, actually semantic, is very, very important for analytics. Garbage in, garbage out. And the stream has uh, zero to many observations. So observation, which is the, uh, the core, uh, the, the data, dynamic data about uh, IoT. So that's the readings, right? Like 10 degrees Celsius, minus 17 Celsius, like the temperature outside right now in Calgary, uh, minus 17. Um, yeah, cold. Um, so that's observations. And each observation has a feature of interest, which is the target of your observation. For example, when you take a picture of someone, and that someone becomes the feature of interest. OK, and feature of interest is very, also very important uh, to uh, reconcile the institute sense. Uh, can do both institute and remote sensing. OK, so that's a recap. So every box in this UML diagram is an entity. And we can do create, update, delete uh, about each entity. OK, so next one. So prerequisite, uh, you need to have a basic understanding of the REST, uh, representational state transfer, which is a very popular way to do web API right now. And also, uh, Sensor Things API is based on JSON at the moment. So uh, you need to understand the basic of JSON. And here are the links to learn more about these two. OK, so one important concept for REST is it uses the HTTP verbs to perform actions. So for example, if you want to, for any a properly designed RESTful API. Uh, POST basically means you create a new entity. So we, when you send a POST a request to the RESTful API, it creates something from 0 to 1, basically from nothing to something, right? Create. And if you want to read something, access, retrieve something, an entity, you use GET request. So you send the same, uh, you follow the same URL. So send the same, um, follow the same URL. But when you send a GET request, you retrieve that entity. And patch, it means you update partial resources. So certain attributes or property of that entity, you use patch. And there's something actually very, some people confuse, confuse about it. it. Actually, some API, they use put. And if you read the spec carefully, actually put means you overwrite that entity. So you need to be very careful, actually. Uh, so when you use put, and make sure you understand what's a put. Um, but in Sensor Things API, it's patch. Patch means update partial resources. And finally, if you want to delete an entity, uh, in this case, for example, want to delete that thing, want to delete an observation, and you use uh, you send a delete request, so you remove entity from the server. So that's the how the RESTful API works um, for almost uh, all the RESTful API if designed properly. Uh, so yeah, so that's the background as well. So steps to connect your sensors. So basically, there are two major steps. The first step is to create contextual information, so relatively static data. And the second part is, after you create this relatively static data, I mean relatively, because um, it will change as well. Yeah? Uh, the metadata might change. Uh, the description might change. So it, it, uh, but just doesn't change very frequently. So after you create the contextual information, the second step is to create the readings. So upload the readings, like the 10 Celsius, right? 10 degrees, 20 degrees. Those are uh, update um, fre more frequently. And in Sensor Things API, actually in almost all the IoT world, and uh, the one, two, three, four, five list on the slides are the things, the, the contextual information required. So first is thin. Remember the data model, you create a thin. And you create the location of the thing. So the thing has a location. Some of the things don't have a location. That's fine. You can create later. And uh, the third one, observe property. So what is the phenomenon your thing is observing? So you need to create that. The fourth one is a sensor. What are the sensors attached uh, to your thing? Like, or 
built in your thing. If your thing, if your thing is a sensor system, so what are the sensors? And finally, create a data stream and using the sensor to observe the observed property. So these are the contextual information. And after you create that, and you just keep uploading observations, and it's done. So these are the steps. Demo, so I think the best way uh, to show you how to do this is to show you demo. So this link, uh, link to a uh, GitHub GIST, uh, just, and so you can, you know the, the JSON request um, we have, uh, we use today. Okay. So first thing, uh, 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 okay. So this is a sandbox, uh, the testing server we have, we use. Uh, this, um, uh, actually you can feel free to use it, but uh, it's pretty um, uh, messy because uh, a lot of people over the world are using this. So we will clean the data time to time. But it's a, it's a testing server, sandbox allow you to use. So you can see, okay, right now we have uh, about almost 800 things, for example. Okay, so when we when you use a browser, uh, uh, you click certain UI uh, in Sensor Things API. Basically, it issues a GET request, so allow you to retrieve the thing. So right now, that's create a thing. Okay, so this is the URL to link into the thing collection, the entity collection. So things. So when we create a new thing, and then we need to uh, send the request, the post request to this URL to this collection. Okay, so let's use uh, one of my favorite application. It's called Postman. So here is the URL to this collection. So things collection, that's have the post. So we create a new thing. And then uh, because uh, the, the encoding we are using is JSON, so make sure you set your uh, uh, content type here is a JSON. So the basically is the, the header HTTP header need to have a content type application JSON. Okay, and then the body. So that's uh, go to the GitHub. So go to the thing. So thing can be very simple. So this is the uh, content. Let's say uh, here. Let me make it bigger, so easier for you to read. So description. So this is a weather station based on Arduino. So let's say we create a thing. The thing is Arduino. And the property, you can put uh, whatever over there. Uh, it's a JSON object, uh, steep land. So here, I copy and paste here. Uh, so description, weather station based on Arduino, uh, Ethernet, how about that? OK, a particular model of Arduino. And when we send, we will send a post request to this entity URL here, fins. And hopefully, a new thing will be created. So send. OK, so we, this is our response. And then status 201 created. And then here's the link to that thing we just created. So let's click on this. Oh, not here. Let's uh, go to this link. So supposedly, a new thing is created. For example, it used to be 786. 786 things, right? Right now we have uh, one more thing, 7807. And this is the thing we just created. Uh, let's go to this particular thing. So this is a weather station based on Arduino Ethernet. Steve Van, right? So this we just created. Okay, so the next step is we just you know keep adding the contextual information, remember? So we just create a thing here, and then let's create a location. Okay. Uh, location, so location is um, location, so if you create location, you need to send to this entity collection, locations, and let's find uh, the code we just prepared, location. Location. Here, let's use this part of the location. So let's say the location is my house. OK. I need one more like this. OK. So in this case, location is my house. The description, encoding type is the GeoJSON. And I use a point. It could be polyline, uh, could be line, could be polygon as well. So let's create a location. Hopefully, it will create a location. Yes. So create a location, and there's an ID here. So a new location has been created. And if we go to this um, here, for example, uh, let's go to location. 
and then see this location is my house has been just uh, created okay so so on and so forth next step uh, let's create a um, oh, not this one let's create a sensor how about sensor okay sensor so similarly you when you want to create a sensor you send to the sensor collection and then you send this and send and you get your sensor back so the sensor has been created and next one let's create a observe property actually some of you are might be already thinking ah it's too many so many steps right but I'll show you actually uh, we have a more elegant way to save you the uh, your precious development time so observe properties and dew point temperature in this case and then I let me send okay a new observe property has been created actually I do need this ID number so this is the observe property number and then I need to know uh, the the other IDs I just created. Um, so like the thing I created, the, the ID is this. As you can see, actually, in Sensor Things API, it's very, very easy for you to browse and to find the information you need. Actually, it's all links. So, and I want to see the location I created, and the location is uh, this. Location. And then I want to see the observed property I just created, the sensor, oh, oh, sensor I just created here. So it's this. Okay, I'll need this. Okay, so next step, I think we just created um, a sensor, observed property, thing, and uh, location. So the next step is to create a data stream. So there's a JSON object for the data stream. Oh, there's a deep insert. That's next step. So let's use this. Okay. So let's create the R stream. And in this case, so the R stream is going to send the request to this uh, collection. And we need ID we just uh, collected. So here the sensor ID is this. So here's the sensor ID. Observe property ID is this. We just created. Replace it and thing ID is this. So basically this request means we are creating a new data stream and the description is as follows. And observation type is measurement. Uh, that means the, the, the value of the observation is a number. Uh, if a truth ob observation, it will be Boolean. Yeah? That's a great thing about standard. It defined very, very elegantly and nicely. And you need a measurement here, Celsius. And it, this data stream uses this sensor ID. It observing this observed property, and this data stream belongs to this thing. Okay, let's send the request. Great. So new data streams, uh, data stream has been created. Okay, the next step is actually it's very very easy. So we create all the static information, relatively static information, and right now, uh, let's upload readings. Reading is very, very important and very, very easy. Uh, do I have observation here? Yes, observation here. Okay, here. So right now, I'm um, actually, I just need this be more consistent so that's sent to the um, because we are creating a new observation so you send to this collection observations collection uh, let's say the result is um, minus 17 degrees outside and replace this ID uh, so data stream ID for this observation is 776085 and the result minus, minus 17 so create uh, let me see what's wrong oh Application JSON. So you have to set the headers application JSON and send. Oh, URL, sorry. Send. Okay. Got it. I got a reminder from my dev team. Uh, I did the mistake because there's no location. 
Uh, but anyways, I don't want to waste your time here. So let me let me try again. Yeah, let me try again. Try this. Fin. And then locations. Ah, okay. So here's the thing. When we create observation, it has a feature of interest. However, I haven't linked the location to this thing. So uh, when I create observations, it doesn't have a feature of interest. So that result, it uh, single things API doesn't accept that. Uh, so I need to create a location first. So sorry, that's a mistake I made. So let me create link the location first. OK. Mm. OK, it's a, it's a good, it's a, it's a good uh, actually, it's a good opportunity to show you the patch. OK, so right now we don't have a location. You know what? Let me skip to something else. OK. But anyways, let's pretend it, have, it, it, it works, OK? And then right now, I want to show you that a deep insert. So actually, I just made a stupid mistake, right? And, uh, but actually, there's a way just to present that mistake happen. Something's called deep insert. Let me show you. So I just show you that you, can, you need to uh, send so many requests to create each entity, for example. However, my battery battery power is very precious, and then my bandwidth is very precious. So can I just save the request using one request but create multiple instances? And then and also prevent the stupid mistake uh, Steve just made. And there's something called deep insert. So let's do it again, create a new thing. So let's say post, create a thing. Okay, and then that's a post, body, here, mm, I need to read. Let's do this again. So let's say post body. Okay, and then put the. Uh, I'll come. So body here, bra here. Yes. Okay. So and application JSON. So here, I'm going to create a thin with the location. So it creates two entities at the same time and the relationship between them using one request, send. So here, I send it. OK. And then let me send another request to create the observed property. Not observed property, data stream. So let's change this to data stream. And my ID is 776111. So let me remember that. 776611. And in this case, if you look at this re request, I create the data stream, unit, unit of measurement, observation type, and observed property and sensor in one request. OK? So this is very, very um, useful to save you a lot of time and prevent the mistakes. And this is called deep insert. So let me create again. The ID is wrong. 6111. Thank you. 6111. Thank you. Create. OK, so this has been created. And you can see different IDs of these, um, um, these uh, entity has been created. OK, so just one request, you create multiple entities. And right now, let me do it again and try to create uh, try to create the new observations. OK. Actually, if I'm teaching right now uh, on campus, I would say, you know, I made that mistake just for you to remember how important it is. Yeah. And then so you pay attention now. OK, so I'm pretty sure you pay attention now. And uh, it's a it's a teaching technique. Just to let you know. So 776119 is the uh, data stream ID. So let's say 117. Hopefully, I'm not embarrassed uh, again. Uh, I won't be embarrassed again. So let's send. 
Yeah, see, a new result has been created. Awesome. And then let me create uh, more, yeah? Like, uh, so upload reading actually is, I just keep clicking and I'm very happy, so I, I upload the readings, right? It's very, very easy. And Chashu Hapa, so if you go to 666119, I think, uh, observations, see? So these are the readings I just created, okay? So I show you how to create one by one. I show you the deep insert if I embarrass my, myself, uh, but I think right now you all remember how to do a, a deep insert, how useful it is, and then I insert the readings into it, okay? And hopefully you can map this process procedure into uh, how an Arduino works, for example. Let's go back to slides. No, not this one, not this one, this one, okay. So that's a demo. Just to show you some best practices. So first one is, when you have some existing entity in the system, try to reuse them. For example, like a sensor, like the observed property, you don't need the multiple observed, uh, like redundant temperature observed property, for example. So reuse them. So that's the beauty of Sensor Things API. You can easily reuse them with the links. Yeah, comparing to a lot of APIs out there, actually, they don't have that. So you have a redundant information. And it's not only about redundancy. It's also about, uh, by reuse them, it's much faster analysis, better discoverability. So you can discover your sensors and data streams very, very easily. For example, with one click, you can get all the temperature of data streams in the Sensor Things API. This is very powerful and improved performance. So this is also the other reason, you know, try to use some API has been, has more than 15 years of R&D into this, right? So because all these scenarios are, uh, has been considered. Best practice number two, if you know your sensors, object properties, and even locations already, you can create them first. Uh, then you add a new thing, just need one post request with deep insert, for example. I could give you an example. For example, you are building an IoT platform for Wi-Fi weight scales. I have one at home. And then, so what you need is a thin. So let's say your thin has a serial number and this and that. So you create that in your sensor things. And in this platform, actually, what object property you have? Everything in your platform use the same object property, weight. So you just create that first. And everything in the platform use that. And for this, the first batch, uh, when you send to OEM, you come back with hardware, right? And you use certain sensor, and you create that first as well. So low sensor. At the moment, you use this sensor, for example, uh, this one from SparkFun. And for the next batch, you might use a different sensor, and you create the, the other sensor, model number, and then uh, you create that in the system. So once you create that, and the rest of them is just to manage the thing and create observations. So it is very, very unuseful. So that's a good practice. Okay. Also, because we have a very um, nice data model and there are constraints as well. For example, when, when you create a, uh, actually the mistake I just made, uh, it's my mistake, not a spec mistake, is because of the integrity constraints. Ah, another te teaching technique. So right now you know this is very important. Um, when you create a data stream, you shall link to a thin because a data stream cannot exist without a thin. And you shall link to a sensor because the data stream use some sensor, and for example. And same thing here, when you delete the data stream, actually it, um, um, it doesn't delete the sensor, doesn't delete the observed property, it doesn't delete the thin. But when you delete a thin, it also delete the data stream, right? This is one with the other uh, integrity constraints. It, it makes sense, I think. When you delete a fin, of course, the data stream of the fin should disappear, for example. Yeah? So the server actually handles the integrity constraints. And some of the API out there, um, or if you don't consider this, actually, you will, be, you will find, okay, we have a data stream, but there's no fin. It, it just doesn't make sense, right? Okay, so again, integrity constraints. And for now, uh, this screen shows that the ecosystem we have in the uh, Central Things API. We have uh, uh, some libraries for Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Embed, link one uh, from MediaTek, uh, Arduino, and Hexoskin is SmartShirt. So this is the benefit of joining an open ecosystem. 
uh, that you have a lots of library to choose, and then they will be maintained by many, many people, uh, by many communities. Uh, so this is a great thing. So let's go to Arduino um, code. So I'm going to show you that, uh, how to connect it. So before you connect Arduino to uh, Sensor Things, you need to create those contextual information first. And then all you need to know to do here is this line of code. This, result value. So result value, for example, result and minus 17. So this, this is all the code, uh, the, this line is all you need to send to the Sensor Things API. And in this case, uh, because Arduino doesn't have a clock, so you can skip uh, the time. You just send the result, and the Sensor Things API will use the server time as the phenomenon time for this uh, reading, for example. And the rest of stuff is just typical HTTP stuff. Okay. Useful resources. There's a playground for you to use, uh, allow you to uh, learn the Sensor Things API. There's API documentation as well. And there is the gist for today's code as well. So hopefully see you next year. Uh, we, uh, we will start uh, the webinar from 2016 very, very soon. So stay tuned. Uh, there, these are some uh, uh, potential topics I will cover. Uh, essential things for real-time applications, uh, MT MQTT. Uh, so it allows the, uh, the users to subscribe to the data streams and get notification as well and also let the sensor to upload readings with MQTT, which is a very efficient protocol. It's very uh, for real-time applications. And I think a lot of you asked this question already. So how Sensor Things API integrate with GIS? The great thing about Sensor Things API is the integration with GIS is awesome. Um, so we'll talk about that and use, use some uh, use cases. And the third part, um, Sensor Things and Spatial Data Infrastructure. So these two are connect very, very nicely together because it's the OGC standard family, and but we'll have one webinar about that. And also, some one of you asked the question about difference between uh, sensor things and sensor observation service. So we have a webinar to talk uh, talk about the difference of the two and when to use the uh, which one and how do these two can interoperate interoperate with each other. Okay, so stay tuned. Uh, exciting topics coming up for the next year. So any questions, and uh, now I'll see you next week. I'll actually see you next uh, year. OK, so let's open the floor for questions. OK, so the first question is, I suppose the deep insert is able to create thin location data stream with reality entity in a single shot. Uh, actually, you can create, I think, it's two shots, actually. Uh, you need to have a thin location first, and then they are stream, and not read the rest of them. Um, uh, uh, the second shot. So basically, it's two requests. Um, I can, uh, yeah. If you go to our gist, you will find the, the information about that. Okay. So next question: Can you avoid observation creation error by deep inserting the feature of interest with observation, even if no location exists? Yes. You can do that, but today, due to the time limit, uh, we didn't do that, but thank you. Yes, this person is very familiar with the spec. That's great. Next question. Does sensor app have plans to create bridges between existing proprietary system and sensor things? The answer is yes. And actually, we not only have plans, we have implementations already uh, to link um, uh, the other proprietary APIs into essential things so that these proprietary APIs can be interoperable as well. And we position ourselves as the data exchange platform. Uh, for example, we are looking at, uh, well, we'll try something like Zyfly, ThinkSpeak, and we're lo looking into uh, the, the GE Predix. Uh, however, uh, it's a, I think it's a private beta. That's one thing about these uh, platforms, right? It's so secret. Uh, but yes, we have the plan to become the bridge. But thank you. And any more questions? And then I can see on the chat panel, actually lots of you uh, gave me the, try to help me and help me say, uh, to t let me know what's the, the ID, uh, correct ID. Thank you very, very much. That means you really pay attention, yeah? So if not, 
uh, no more questions, I wish you a, uh, oh, reminder, okay. Okay, one more question. Long or models are accepted like address? The answer is, repeat the question. Okay, so the question is as follows. So for sensor things location, okay? And right now, all the examples I show are lat and long. And the question is, can we use more than lat long? Can we have a feature? Can we have a other location model in it? It's a great question. The answer is yes. A great differentiation between sensor things and other APIs is that our support to location model is superb, it's awesome. We can support not only lat long, but we also support like point line polygon for sure, right? We can also support moving feature. We can support 3D models. We can support discrete uh, geolocation, like the ID of certain uh, area, and it could be uh, uh, other models as well. And the other great thing about it is they coexist. It's called duality. Geometry and topology coexist in the physical space. Uh, this is a advanced topic, um, but this is, can be very, very critical. For, for, for example, indoor location. How do you model the location of indoor? Lat long, that's a joke. You don't use lat long in indoor. It's useless. You need to have both the geometry model as well as the topological model, which is the connectivity between these uh, nodes in indoor. So we will have uh, more advanced topics of doing this uh, in the future. But thank you for asking these questions. So if no more questions, um, just a reminder, next webinar in January with Eclipse Foundation, and then it's an open source foundation, and then please join us there. And also, um, please come back uh, to our link. Uh, you can review these four webinars and during your Christmas, if you want. And then Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays, and hope to see you all next year. And uh, thank you very much.